Good evening, everyone. Uh, I think we'll start the program. I'll start sharing my screen. Happy International Women's Day. Welcome to Takam celebration with Alfidar Iltebir and Duygu Kuzu. Uh, so we have uh, two distinguished speakers tonight. Uh, I'll give brief information about them first. Uh, Alfidar uh, Iltebir is from Urumqi in China. She was born there. And when she was a teenager, she moved to Istanbul where she went to high school. Uh, after graduating from Kabatash High School, she moved to USA in 2000. She graduated from George Mason University with a BA degree in marketing. And since then, she is working in the marketing and project management area. She taught Uyghur language to US government employees and actively working in uh, Uyghur American Association. Uh, other uh, distinguished speaker tonight, uh, Duygu Kuzu, she's a clinical psychologist. She was born and raised in Turkey. She graduated from Izmir University of Economics with a bachelor degree in psychology. Then uh, she got PhD in clinical health psychology from uh, Istanbul University. Currently, she is doing uh, postdoctoral research at the uh, University of Michigan Physical uh, Rehabilitation and Treatment Department. So um, we are uh, happy to have them and we are uh, grateful them that they accepted our invi invitation and joined our meeting uh, tonight. Uh, as you know, to uh, today uh, we will discuss uh, about uh, about violence against women. So uh, before going to violence, uh, I'll talk a little bit about what is International Day. Uh, Women's Day is officially celebrated internationally on March 8 since 1975. On that day, women across the world come together to force the world to recognize the inequalities women face at work or public offices, such as pay gap, position opportunities, or representation. They want to create awareness for the violence against women, as well as celebrating the achievements of women who have overcome uh, these barriers. So when we talk about violence against women, uh, we can group such a violence in three categories. One happening in the family settings, like as domestic violence, traditional practices, female genital mutilation, son preference, dowry related violence and early marriages. Another violence could be in the community, like rape, sexual assault within marriage, sexual harassment, prostitution and trafficking, pornography, mistreatment of women migrant workers. The third group of violence comes from state, such as custodial violence against women, violence against women in situations of armed conflict, and violence against refugee and displaced women. For the first two group, I'll uh, briefly give some numbers and uh, point out the, the dramatic scene of that cases. So for women aged 15 to 44 years, violence is a major cause of death and disability. Studies show that between one quarter and one half of all women in the world have been abused by intimate partners. Worldwide, 40 to 70% of all female murder victims are killed by an intimate partner. So these are the numbers from Turkey. Oh, uh, since 2008, you, you see that there is an increment in the number of women killed uh, by their intimates. 
So that number is almost tripled or uh, quadrupled. So it was less than 100 uh, in 2008. And last two years, it's more than 450 per year. So those are the only uh, numbers that women murdered. So when we uh, look at the killers of those women, we'll see that they are mostly killed by their husband. So they, they grouped uh, the percentages of killers of total 1,260 women during 2008 and 18. They found that almost 50% of women killed by their husband. In the second group comes the boy, boyfriends. And actually, if you count all those uh, other groups like ex-husband, uh, known person, close uh, relative in the family, mainly men, like brothers, sons, uncles, fathers, only about one and a half percent is by strangers. So like almost 99%, 98% of women are killed by their uh, men relatives. So that is quite tragic. And uh, this, this, this graph I uh, got from OECD uh, sources, it shows the physical and sexual uh, violence uh, against women in um, 2019. The, these are the percentages. So Turkey is not in a good position. Of course, there are worse countries like Pakistan, Yemen, Iran. But uh, the woman, 38% of women in 2019 uh, ex experienced a physical and sexual violence. This is quite terrible. But if you look at the numbers in United States, it's not good either. So they are very close, like 38 versus 35.5. So uh, it is a worldwide problem. It's not uh, Turkey's or some uh, undeveloped countries problem. It's a worldwide problem that women are experiencing uh, all kinds of uh, violence. So after this brief uh, introduction, uh, we will come to the tonight's topic, which is uh, the violence perpetrated or condoned by the states and specifically the Uyghur uh, woman uh, experiencing violence. So this part will be uh, discussed by Elfidar Ilteber. Elfidar, could you un unmute yourself? Okay, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Thank you for accepting again uh, our invitation and uh, attending this event, experience, uh, sharing your experience. Sure, it's my pleasure. And thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak. Um, as you all know, it's very important topic uh, for any human beings, uh, for all the countries. Uh, I'm Uyghur American, um, as you introduced before, uh, living in the US since 2000 and um, trying to do um, some community work with the Uyghur American Association that tried to preserve and promote Uyghur culture, Uyghur language. Uh, today, I will talk about uh, the Uyghurs and specifically uh, about the Uyghur women. Um, so who are the Uyghurs? Can you guys see my screen? Do you want me to start with the video or? Oh yes, let's let's start with the video to give an overview and then I'll go into the slides. Okay. Thank you. Over the last few years, women came forward to tell their stories of surviving sexual violence and discrimination. And when women spoke out, we came together and in one voice said, we believe you. Sorry, On this I... International Women's Day, let's come together again. I think you and don't show see the same it, right? Solidarity to the Uyghur yeah, we can facing the most appalling abuse. Uyghurs are a person 
living in the northwest of China. So I'll start again. Million Sorry. women came for few last few years. Women came forward to tell their stories of surviving sexual violence and discrimination. And when women spoke out, we came together and in one voice said, "We believe you." On this International Women's Day, let's come together again and show the same solidarity to the Uyghur women facing the most appalling abuse. Uyghurs are a persecuted Muslim minority living in the northwest of China. Millions of innocent. It was showing at some point and uh, disappeared again. We can share at the end if you would like me to start now. Uh, you're muted, so we can't hear you. They had an electric fashion. I didn't know what it was. It was pushed into my private parts and I was tormented with electric shocks. Han Chinese men would pay money to have their pick of the pretty young inmates. We still can see it. Mass sterilization of women, which aims to prevent a new generation of Uyghurs from ever being born. Every 10 days, we had to stick our arms through to get an injection. We didn't know what it was, but the younger women stopped having their periods. They give shots and remove fetuses forcefully. If they say it's illegal, they make you get an abortion. Those who didn't obey were sent to the camps. We lost a part of our body. We lost our identity as women. We will never be able to have children again. They cut out one of our organs. It's gone. In the face of overwhelming evidence, the Chinese government calls these courageous women lying. Together on International Women's Day, let them hear us say, we believe Uyghur women. Yeah. Go ahead, Elsie. Sure. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Um, we were, I wasn't able to see the video, but we heard uh, what they were talking about. I think that's enough for now instead of taking too much time. Um, so I would like to start with one second. Let me share my screen. And uh, and I apologize. My camera is here and my computer is here, so <laughs> I'm gonna be like shifting, looking. Do you guys see my uh, screen full? Not yet. One second. I was trying to play the video myself and uh, remove a couple screens. Let me see. Okay. I already shared the screen. Yeah, but this I can't see it. How will I be one day? Okay, now it's away on each one day. Picture at those PowerPoint thing. Okay. Finally. <laughs> now you can see it, right? Um, yes, can you make it slash show? All right. 
Yeah, sounds very good. Okay. Sorry for uh, <laughs> some technical problems here. Um, so let me just start. Um, we will talk about who are the Uyghurs and why China oppressed uh, Uyghurs and then the life uh, before the camps. And then we will talk about the inside the camps and then outside the camps, like how, what are the Uyghurs are dealing with. And also uh, we will have a camp survivorism, Red Dawood. Uh, she will share her experiences and then um, we will go through uh, what can we do for this oppression. So next. Um, Uyghurs are the uh, Central Asian Turkic people of East Turkestan. China calls it Xinjiang. That means new territory, new frontier. We don't like to use that name, but that name itself uh, gives it away that they took our uh, land occupied recently. Um, Uyghurs have 5,000 years of history. And I shared uh, Kororan, beauty of Kororan, uh, some uh, internationally they call lowland, uh, two, 4,000 years old uh, mummy that is found in uh, Tarim Basin, which shows that Uyghurs were living in those areas uh, four or 5,000 years ago. Um, also, uh, Uyghurs were independent, as you know, they were, uh, Uyghurs Kahans in uh, 70, uh, 744, uh, right after Gokhtur Kahans. Uh, after that, uh, in 7th, 8th centuries, uh, Uyghurs had um, uh, a lot of um, contribution to art and literature, very famous uh, people like uh, Kashkarli Mahmoud, Mahmoud Kashkari, Yusuf Hasajib, Aman Nisa Khan. Uh, they did uh, a lot of contribution to the, uh, uh, to the world. Uh, Uyghur of um, course, also used the uh, Turkic alphabet first. Uh, that's another thing that we can talk about. And uh, recent uh, history, Uyghurs were uh, independent. They had built, accomplished, I mean, uh, established uh, Uyghur East Turkestan Republic in uh, 1933 and 1944. So until we were occupied 1949, we were independent. Uh, let's see, next. Uyghurs are very happy people, uh, as you see on the photos, beautiful girls wearing traditional outfit. Usually we have long braided hair, uh, very optimistic, positive content people. Uh, but uh, China systematically uh, oppressed uh, these uh, East Turkestan. The reasons are uh, first ma uh, massive land uh, expansion for Chinese population. Uh, as you know, China has 1.4 uh, billion um, population and they need, you know, they want to expand, they need more space. And also total area of East Turkestan is 1.6, uh, 1, bil 1 uh, million 600, square kilometers. Uh, it's like twice as big as uh, Turkey. And it's very rich in oil, like very rich in mineral resources and then the cotton fields. Um, so it's like rare min 80 percent of China's uh, cottons comes from the Uyghur region where they use the forced labor. 20 percent of world's cotton comes from East Turkestan. So if you can think of that, you know how uh, important this region is. Um, East Turkestan is uh, also uh, geopolitically uh, very uh, important uh, uh, location. It's on the Silk Road. Um, uh, also, the One Belt, One in, uh, Road initiative by China uh, also uh, includes East Turkestan. So this um, Silk Road opens China to the Europe and the West in order to sell China's product uh, to the world. Everything has to pass in this region. So China wants to silence the Uyghurs and assimilate them uh, in these open areas for trade instead of um, repressing the locals. Like they could, they could do these trades and developments peacefully, but instead they chose to oppress the Uyghurs and make it like one hand Chinese look uh, country so they can do their trades easily. Let me go next. Uh, oppression of Uyghurs before the camps. Uh, this systematic, um, uh, assimilation for Uyghurs were decades, decades 
it's old. Uh, since uh, 1980s, China had um, uh, birth control policies that is uh, very strong and they try to, to uh, control over Uyghur's uh, population. Uh, camps were built, uh, the massive uh, crackdown began uh, in 2016. However, China was systematically assimilating Uyghurs um, uh, before that with forced abortion, forced contraceptives, uh, also ban Uyghur, they banned the Uyghur language in schools. When I was a child, uh, Chinese was second language we were learning together, but uh, right now, uh, Uyghur language is not taught in schools, it's only Chinese. Uh, they also ban some Uyghur and Muslim, Muslim and Turkic names like Fatima uh, or um, uh, Mohammed, those kind of names are banned. We cannot give uh, the future kids uh, those names. Also uh, practice of religion is also banned. Uh, it was also banned years and years ago when I was a child, one day, when my grandmother came and I fast, and but in school, my teachers were so upset at me and they forced me to eat or drink something. And that has been uh, for so long that uh, religious practice are banned. Uh, the Uyghurs are not freely practice their religion. Separation of Turkic and Islamic root. Uh, they also try to deny our our roots, our history, like they don't want us to connect to Turks. They don't want us to connect the Islamic world so we can be like isolated and assimilated easily. And the last one is, um, I said no communication because since uh, 2016, uh, even for outside the camp, we cannot talk to our friends and family members. The phone lines are not working. Even if they call, they get in trouble. They can um, be taken to the camps, so uh, there is no communication also. Now we talk about inside the camps. Um, what they're going through is camps detainees constantly listens to CCP propagandas and President Xi's codes in Chinese, and they try to memorize that. Uh, they cannot talk to each other. Detainees have ID numbers, and that's how they call each other, so people don't know each other. They don't want people to remember each other's name and uh, who's there, you know, what do they do? So there is no opportunities to uh, talk and, you know, talk to others. According to all the camp survivors, uh, we have three of them in the U.S. Uh, Uyghurs are uh, faced to torture, um, integration in the camps, and ladies are given unknown drug to both males and females. Uh, so um, that stops... Uh, periods of the female detainees, but it's also the systematically uh, sterilization of uh, the Uyghur people in the camp. Um, gang rapes and sexual assault and tortures were um, also widespread on the camps, uh, and BBC and CNN also documented many camp survivors' interviews and proved that. Um, not just camp police, also CCP officials come to the camps at night and pick the girls they want and they can take them to the dark rooms. And after raping them, unfortunately, um, the girls just quietly goes back to the, um, they go back to the um, camps and they can't even talk about it. They just silently cry and they can't talk about what happened to other inmates, unfortunately. Um, they are uh, Tursunai Ziyavudun, who is uh, the camp survivors who has been uh, faced to gang rape multiple times, said that uh, she was released because of her Kazakh uh, husband. Uh, but once someone gets out of the camps, they're finished, they're done. Their life is not the same anymore. Uh, camp detainees are taken to the forced labor manufacturers as well. Uh, so some, some are labeled as graduated after a certain time, like six months or one year. And they take those people to the forced labor camps inside East Turkestan and also inner China. And they are working almost for free just to feed themselves and long hours and you know very bad situations. Um, and there is, they don't take just, they take all the Uyghurs that I forgot to mention earlier. So there are scholars, there are singers, there are um, 
writers, teachers, professors, like very the influential, important people that backbone of the Uyghur societies, they all in the camps, unfortunately, and um, a lot of ladies as well. Um, let's see. So those are inside the camp and also um, uh, organ harvesting is another big issue in the camps. There are uh, crematoria uh, trees right next to the camps, which is very sad because during the Holocaust, uh, they count the schools and they were able to tell how many people were killed. But this is impossible with China because they're uh, already planned this, that they built the crematorias right next to the um, camp. So when there is organ harvesting, uh, they just uh, basically uh, burn the body. Uh, so no one knows what happened, how many people die. And this is another tragic way of uh, China um, killing Uyghurs. Um, uh, I just want to bring up another issue here that the Chinese, uh, some hospitals made an ad about halal organs. Have you ever heard halal organs ads? Basically, Islamic countries going to China, their DNA is matched um, in the 24 hours or 48 hours, and they basically find a live body and they can take their organs, kidneys, heart. And they also advertise this as we have halal organs because Uyghurs are Muslim. And this is another sad tragedy about um, the camp uh, stories. Uh, they're also given uh, unknown medicines, uh, which, uh, you know, uh, which uh, I, I talked about it before, which uh, also sterilize them. And also different medicines are also tested using uh, Uyghurs as a guinea pig. Uh, it's uh, given inside the camps. Uh, another very important issue that it affects us as a woman, uh, ladies is uh, when both parents are taken to the camps, children are taken to the state-sponsored uh, orphanages, uh, boarding schools, and they are also stripped away of their identity, stripped away of their culture, their language, and they're being raised as a Han Chinese and they won't even remember their parents. And they are in orphanages, even though their parents are alive. And that's another sad, uh, you know, situation going on. Uh, according to Adrian Zen's uh, reports, uh, 500,000 to 1 million kids are in the state-run orphanages. Um, there are some videos, uh, you can just uh, check, uh, Google it up or YouTube, uh, you can see how those kids are, they don't even remember their Uyghur name and they just raised as Chinese. Uh, next one, camps. Next. Next, one second. Hold on, I'll get no. Okay, so outside the camps, I wanna talk about that. Uh, can we go one before, let me go one before. As you see in these photos uh, on the right, I wanted to just talk about it. The top one is inside the camps, as you see on the TV, Xi Jinping is talking and those people using those, I would say table, as table to ride and sleep on it. They take turns at night to sleep because there isn't enough space. So they're like two hours, like 10 people sleeps. And then after two hours, they switch. And like the lights are always on. Those are also other psychological torture for them. The photos in the bottom is from Urumqi airport. As you see, this is unbelievable. That uh, green line says, this is the fast lane for organ transplant. Can you imagine they transfer, transport the organs and there is a line for them. So they don't have to wait on the long line so they can deliver the organs so fast. And this is in Urumqi, East Turkestan airport. So I wanted to point that out. And uh, next, now outside the camps is, uh, you would think people are not in the camps, they're safe, but they also, open uh, prison, they're in open prison. It's surveillance state, there are cameras everywhere. Uh, everything is being watched. You, there is like a police uh, station in every um, 
40 to 50 meters that checks your IDs. Uh, so it's like a surveillance uh, state that you, police state that you live in. Sterilization also uh, uh, well widespread and outside the camps and forced abortion and forced marriage. That's another thing I, I wanna bring up. Um, Uyghur girls are known uh, pretty and uh, China because of their um, birth policy They've been uh, doing abortion to the girls and keeping the boys, and that kind of increased the ratio of uh, a lot of bachelors. They're looking for uh, girls. So East Turkestan is perfect for them. So the government is advertising, like, come to East Turkestan. We have beautiful girls. We will give you a house. Just move to East Turkestan. That way, they can also increase the Chinese population in East Turkestan in East Turkestan, and also assimilate to Uyghurs by um, uh, forced marriages. As you see on that top photos, that girl is not happy. She's wearing long Chinese outfit, and that Chinese Han Chinese uh, man uh, is asked to marry, and she's forced to marry. Many Uyghurs are forced to marry because they don't want their parents to take into the camp. So they sacrifice themselves so their parents can stay outside the camp. Um, th this is also uh, very tragic for the women uh, in of East Turkestan. And another uh, thing is Chinese relative plan. So basically, um, um, uh, peering Chinese relatives initiatives organized by also CCP Chinese men are um, staying in Uyghur's houses and sharing the same bath as the uh, host and the, reporting their daily life to uh, Chinese Communist Party. Um, imagine like foreigners comes to your house and stays for months and months and watch you, you know, whatever you're doing, they're reporting. Are you praying? Are you doing this? Are you saying uh, something against the government? Like they watch all those. Besides that, uh, with this, uh, there's a photo of it as well. They share the same bath. Uh, besides that, there are a lot of um, rape stories. The most men are in the camps and the woman stays there and the men, stranger man comes to your house. And uh, it's also trauma for the children and also trauma for the Uyghur woman. There are a lot of rape stories that way as well. Um, separation of the family and children. I talked about that already when both parents take in uh, kids, not children are not given to the grandparents, they take into the orphanages. And also, uh, so no Uyghur language is banned, Uyghur culture is banned, Uyghur religion is banned. So even outside uh, the camp, uh, they're, they're uh, facing the oppression. Uh, last slide. And I would like to uh, uh, invite our camp survivor Zumret Daoud to give a couple minutes of her experience inside the camp. Zumret, while she's connecting, um, uh, as you see, that's her talking, uh, giving a testimony in uh, a religious freedom event in New York, uh, organized by UN. And also on the right side, you see a camps, uh, China called so-called re-education. Uh, centers, but it's just like a prison, even heavier than prison, as you see. Zumret, are you there? Zumret, siz bağ mı? Ben bağ, köyümdeniz mi? Ah, köydüm. Siz bizge kentin işçideki köygenleri anız, sizden hikayeler anız bak uzun bilimiz hemimiz anlıgan. Aşı kentin işçide siz köygenlerini anlıgan. Hoş, bugünkü jıgan katnaş konumdan naitte mi hoş al? Bugün gerek bir şahit buluş sütüm bilen ben ayalların turmesi yani lageri işlediki köygenlerim tatkallarımını kıskartıp durup da beri. Onu. She would like to thank everyone for giving this opportunity to speak out, and she wants to briefly talk about her experience in the camp, ladies, the female camps. Go ahead. Mushu mini yoldushum Pakistanlık boğalları üçün ben uyadım kutlup çıkaldım yani aşu türmede lagardım yani kilip mushu eğer minim memmo adet ki bir uyguru bilen toyakla kıran bosam uyadım kaç kutlamaydım memmo prosedne çantu top çetelge kaç çıkalı galım üçün 
түрмедеке лагер дейті отқан ұйғыр аялыры мәйлі әрқанда ұйғырның аваз бұл үшін хазыр қадар тұрышып келіп атым ән? Because my husband was uh, Pakistani, I was, he worked hard and I was able to uh, uh, get out. Uh, they released me and I was able to come to the US. But uh, if I was, uh, uh, if my husband was Uyghur, I wouldn't be uh, escaped. Uh, I would be in the camp. That's why I want to be the voice of those uh, women in the camp. And the Uturmina Ishidikini Shlani Mandapede. Ad tigan da kupkan da ashu shunchli kelake najar khudi tamak ad kanda ishtil meydagan sayna kuktatlanan uzub tashuitidagan yallarga oxshash nerslarga oxshash ashinda tashuitidagan say kuktatlanan ustigila qaynaxsunu qiyub ishkital mumblan hatta bir vaq ashniyisek xal keshkichilik bir bir kun nechidamde ishkatta mashinda berdu uchunju uchunju sigalake um, the, she, first she wants to talk about the food. Uh, she said uh, they were given uh, like almost rotten uh, vegetable with the hot water. It's just like boiled and uh, a small bun uh, uh, bread. Uh, that's what they eat and uh, for like lunchtime it's just uh, um, rice and that's it she said she doesn't she never feels full stomach uh, she was always hungry oberni nimo hatta kameralar ba oberni ajatxanda otasingiz ajatxani mi yo'q endi to'saqsiz oberni si ajatxani si ashad otasingiz mi kamerada ko'rib turalaydi sizningki ajatqa qotqa vaqtingizni tatib kuzitib turalaydi the uh, the whole room is big and bathroom is inside the room so it's all open everything can be uh, seen and there are cameras everywhere so you don't even have your private space and whatever you do they watch you aylap aylap munchuq tushamaydi men ishqa yetish jarayonida bir qatta munchuq tushamadim uni ichidagi ayollar mushu juyinmagalliqdan turab Bedelleri laki, gayr purak payda bulup, hatta ki bedelleri kışkak çıkıp, hatta pişleşip, aşında muhit bek nacer ona açın. Hygiene is very bad there, as you see the restrooms are smells really bad, she said earlier. And you cannot take a shower once she stayed two months and she didn't take a shower at all. Some people there, they didn't even shower for many months, almost a year. So people have uh, uh, skin problems, it's itchy and uh, a lot of disease also there. Kunda doğru bir de o doğru ne işke işimi günümüzde bir iş için ağızıga, ağızımızın kollarına tıkıp tekşür edi o. Every day they give unknown medicines and they want to make sure we take it and they put their fingers in our mouth to check to make sure we take it. 15 gün de bir kattım kanalı da bu kanlı ağa vakti da bilikimizin işgiden muşun okşa işçek mana kulumuzda çıkarıp birimiz karşı tarafta o kançilik potoka ağını mı bilmeyimiz jeneğine uzakarak dursa cıkarak aptu bir gün deyimiz azarak asa bir gün az aptu jeneğinin aşu bedenimizde sancılığa vakti de tatıp kançilik vakti çilik çıkarılsa şunçilik cık aldığı azaldığı da düşünümüz Olmasa karşı tarafta kancılık potoku kaldı mı, mencilik kaldı mı ya unudun çoğun kaldı mı? Kanla kancılık ağını bilmemiz 15 gündür bir katta mı kanla alıdı? Around 15, every 15 days they withdraw blood, they take in blood from them. So they just put their arms out of the door that the doors you see on the pictures. So, excuse me, they can't even see how much blood is taken. So when when the needle is longer in their arms, they, they think like, okay, today they took so much blood. And when it stays shorter, then they like, oh, they are probably took only one tube of blood. So that's, we don't even see how much blood they're taking and what they're doing with it. Kırpla ertesiye kandal ayal bosa, çeçi uzun bulamdı, kısık bulamdı, kulaklığın tüyü dolan çeşlerimizden hemisini kesiverdi. Uh, when she entered the camp, uh, her hair was shaved. Uh, uh, she was surprised. And I want to add here that uh, those shaved hair, we thought they just, you know, 
get rid of it, but they actually sell those hairs in the US and other markets. Um, the New York um, uh, Custom Borders seized um, 800 million dollars of uh, um, no no no 800 thousand uh, dollars of uh, hair human hair and they were uh, from the camp detainees. Daviram. Yigen doğrulana tesiri bizne adet keltirmediye hem bizne bırakıl kamış halaki ruhu çıkacak adamdak halaki bir neslenim esliyem meydan aşta kamış koydu ayalla onu hiç de heyiz gömedi. Uh, because of the unknown medicine drugs we took, uh, some of the women stop having their periods and uh, most of us don't even know where we are, like we can't think straight and it, we were just like a um, drunk person type of, you know, we lost ourselves. Künüm künüm soğuk aşkı muzdak yagya kumumuzla muzdak kuyupla orunduk mu bəmidi? Aşdak yada Xi Jinping'nin Nazriyesi, Xi Jinping'nin üçün alaqı, min jüş ibadi, künüm künüm biz ayalan hamis soğuk taqiyyat oturmiz, muallimimiz aşu, qapaz gusolağlı qalatta biz gider sütti, min jüş ibadi. There was, it was very cold inside and there wasn't even chair, we were sitting on the floor and we used to get so cold. The teacher was teaching us Xi Jinping's codes and Communist Party propaganda uh, from the other side. Onun işte de iş bir uruktukallarla körüştüğün veya ki tukallar falan alakalıdan ya üydikler kim kicek ekip verdiğin onda işler yok. Hatta ki ailemizdikilerin mu bizden ne güzelim galakımız ne? Kaysı bir sakçana, kaysı bir oranga yitvat kanımız ne? Is direksizlam iş kabır çakırgan falan yok. İş kanda ailemizdikilerimizle mu bizden alakalışamaydı. Uh, once you are taken to the camps, uh, you have no contact with your family members. Your family doesn't know, your family don't know where you are, which uh, camp you're in. If you're healthy or if you're dead, they have no ideas. Uh, there is no way to communicate. Uh, uh, when she was in the camp, she couldn't communicate her family. Uh, 16 yıl ekirket gelen ölüm haberi e, Türkümle kirişke başladı. 100 adamla ekirketse 20-30 adamla ülke çıkıp atladı. Since uh, this camp uh, opened 2016, around 2017 uh, we were hearing uh, uh, the death stories from friends and families. Um, like if they take in like 100 people, around 20-30 people uh, were dead and their body was coming out of the camps. Um, they don't even give the dead body, they just bury, they don't give the body to uh, the family. Мы <gülüyor> So uh, she got uh, a little emotional. Um, the rape is very widespread. We, we could hear and see girls were taken at night. Uh, when they come back, since they're not allowed to talk to each other, those girls, they're, uh, you know, they lose themselves. They don't know what to do. And they, all they can do is bite their fingers, she, she said. They can't even kill themselves because they hate their body, they hate themselves and they can't even kill themselves. So they are just, all they can do is just waiting uh, and biting themselves, trying to get the stress out. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what she wants to share for now. I think she got a little emotional and we also, uh, uh, time is up. Thank you so much, Zumret. Thank you so much, Zumret. Rahmet, mücazim yok, bu mesela uzak sözler yaptım.
Mm-hmm. She's not feeling. She's not feeling well now. All those uh, camp survivors. Every time they tell the stories, it's uh, another trauma for them, and they can't get back to themselves for many days. So, she said um, she's not feeling well. But if you guys have question at the end, I will translate. Thank you. Thank you. I will wait for your questions if you have any. She said. Uh, one last thing I wanted to say uh, what we can do, if you still can see my screen. Uh, what we need is the raise awareness, uh, talk, talk to your neighbors, talk to your friends, talk to your relatives, uh, tell them about what's going on in East Turkestan, what's going on to Uyghur people. Uh, also support Uyghur organizations like I am from Uyghur American Association. There are many Uyghur organizations uh, such as Uyghur Human Rights Project or there are other like Jewish or faith communities. There are a lot of them. They're helping Uyghurs right now. Uh, we would like you to support that. And also um, boycott Chinese product. Um, I'm missing it there. <laughs> boycott Chinese product um, because what makes China strong is their uh, economy. Uh, if we can impact their economy, they are forced to make changes. Uh, that's why uh, if we boycott Chinese product and uh, start um, uh, sanctioning Chinese officials and uh, work for the stop the Uyghur uh, forced labor, uh, it's going to make some impact. Uh, last one is uh, advocate Uyghur bills. Uh, right now at the Hill, uh, there is a Uyghur Forced Labor uh, Prevention Act. Uh, that is S65 on the Senate and HR uh, 6210 in the House. Um, call your senators, write to your House representatives, tell them you support Uyghurs and you're against uh, for the Uyghurs forced labor. Uh, that is going to also help. And there is also new uh, Uyghur wellness initiative that we help all those camp survivors and other Uyghurs. We all can talk to our, our family members, can talk to our um, relatives and constantly hearing those bad news also uh, affects us. Like for example, I can't sleep at night. Um, I don't have appetite and, and uh, it's affecting me this much. Uh, my family is here. My friends, they, they haven't talked to their parents for months, years. So it's, uh, we're going through also uh, some trauma. Uh, so the Uyghur Wellness Initiative ha helps to match um, psychologists, psychiatrists to those who need. So that's uh, all I can say. Sorry, it took so long. And uh, thank you again. Thank you, Elfidar, uh, and also uh, Zumret. Uh, thank you for your braveness and uh, sharing your story with us. It's so sad. I mean, and know, knowing that there are still thousands of women over there living through those terrible things is quite uh, exhausting. Well, um, it's, uh, millions of women, by the way. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah. uh, Conservatively, they said up to 3 million, but we believe it's more than that. Recently, Adrian Zen's report also shows that 1.6 millions are in the forced labor camps and around, you know, over uh, around 3 million is in the camp. So you can tell, you know, what that is uh, in total. Hopefully there will be some solution, international solution for that problem. Uh, so far, Canada, US, and Netherlands passed the Uyghur genocide um, recognition, and we're hoping Turkey and other countries uh, to pass the same uh, recognition and take immediate action. Thank you. Hopefully, yeah. So we'll move on uh, uh, to our uh, another uh, distinguished speaker, uh, psychologist Duygu Kuzu. Um, Duygu will talk about the psychological aspects of this kind of uh, violence uh, against women. Hi everyone, uh, thank you for inviting me here today. I'm so sad to hear that what's happening in the uh, camp. So, but at the same time, I'm happy for Zumret and he, she survived. I wish for rest of the women that they might, uh, they will probably survive either. So it was so sad hear that and thank you for sharing your experience 
it seems it's still traumatic for you. So today I will uh, share my knowledge with you about consequences of trauma. So um, what is traumatic experience? Life is a, um, sorry, life is a full of stressful changes. So some st stressful experiences can be good, such as uh, the birth of a child, some bad, such as financial difficulties. But in our everyday language, we use the word trauma for many types of stressful experiences. However, actually traumatic experiences are unique because they specifically threaten us with serious physical injury or death. Um, traumatic events can include in experiencing or witnessing of, uh, I, I would like to highlight the witnessing, uh, so physical abuse, sexual abuse or sexual assault, domestic violence or community violence, emotional abuse, neglect, uh, parental mental issues, a natural disaster, sudden and violent death of loved one, witnessing a war, genocide, and of course, pandemic during these times we all experience. A trauma may be very complex, can happen as a single event. A recurring event can be complex and historical and intergenerational. Trauma leaves its lasting imprint on the body and implicit memory system. Trauma memories remain unintegrated and are very powerful. Um, as we might expect, life-threatening situation will produce a variety of intense and any unusual stress reactions in our emotions, thoughts, and actions. The most common, common symptoms of trauma fall into three broad areas. First is re-experiencing, I will explain in this way. Avoidance, hyperarousal, and other emotions like such as guilt, anger, and depression. So um, what is re-experiencing? It's repetitive, vivid and intrusive thought, images, mem memories, and sensation about trauma and its consequences are hallmark symptoms and can create anxiety. Uh, traumatic um, images or thoughts may introduce during a day as like flashbacks or during at night as nightmares. Uh, other typical thoughts of may include believing you are in a danger, believing that you should control these dangers, believing that you should have somehow been able to do more stop the event from happening. So we can name them as distorted cognition and they are needed to be handled improperly. And hyperarousal, as the name implies, is abnormally heightened state of anxiety that occurs whenever you think about a traumatic event. And even though threat may no longer be present, you your body will respond as it if, as if it were like Zumet was mentioning. She was uh, like uh, like experiencing the same thing when she was mentioning about them. So panic attacks, racing heart, and eating disturbances also common in this type of hyperarousal. In my clinical practice, I see that. Most of the patients who come to the clinic with the complaint of panic attack or eating disorders have had a traumatic experience most of the time. And avoidance, uh, another most common symptoms, basically not wanting to be around reminders of the trauma, who wants, right? This may include avoiding some of people, places, and things that remind you uh, of the events or were present at, present at the time. But it can also be included in avoiding certain conversations, thoughts, and feelings. Um, people may be drawn socially, begin to feel alienated and mistrustful to others of others, and report an increased conflict with others. Avoidance uh, can also take the form of strange, almost dreamlike experiences called depersonalization or derealization, which is a popular um, term from movies. Uh, in this situation, you might feel uh, un unreal or disconnected from your surroundings, uh, nearby people on your own body. Alcohol and other substances are also another method often used to avoid traumatic uh, feelings. Uh, so it's, it's a kind of self-medicating activity. Uh, it's very common. So when it comes to the time, we cannot exactly know, but trauma reactions common, commonly last for several weeks or months before people start to feel normal again. And the vast majority of individuals report that they feel better uh, within first three months without any help. 
but for ongoing trauma may produce more prolonged stress because the uh, continuous reminder that threat uh, of danger is not over. Uh, in spite of normally um, in, in intense trauma reaction during the initial world, uh, months, most people are able to function relatively well. Uh, again, um, it depends on the nature of the trauma, I can say. Um, when symptoms are severe enough uh, during the most uh, first months to impair social or occupational functioning, we can mention uh, acute stress disorder diagnosis. If these symptoms are last more than a month, the sy syndrome, called, syndrome is called post-traumatic stress disorder. So approximately half of uh, those who have post-traumatic symptoms will recover within three months. The likelihood that you will continue to experience these symptoms beyond three months depends on the variety of factors. For example, direct exposure to the traumatic events, uh, seriousness of the threat to life, amount of time uh, trauma was experienced or history of past trauma, some psychological difficulties uh, before traumatic experience. Probably, for instance, uh, trauma like Uyghur's experience will more likely to last longer because they expose more. Um, for diagnostic criteria, uh, according to psychiatric diagnostic criteria, uh, in order to diagnose with post-traumatic stress disorder, you have to meet these criteria like direct experience or witnessing, learn that violent or traumatic events happen to someone close to them, experience repeated or extreme exposure to the details of traumatic events. And repeated three experiences of the tra traumatic events, persistent avoidance of situation, thoughts, memories associated with the trauma, uh, negative change in thought and mood uh, associated with the event, hyper, hyper arousal, as I say, and uh, dissociation, dissociation. So there are several factors influencing develop, developing post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, environmental factors uh, like uh, severity of the duration, uh, proximity, social support, av availability of social support, and psychological factors like pre-existing condition, like having anxiety disorder or depression disorders before traumatic events. Uh, coping strategy is also important and some um, cross-cultural differences and gender differences. What we know is women and minority groups are most likely to develop post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, neuroimaging findings shows us that brains of, brains of people with post-traumatic stress disorder are more reactive to emotional stimuli. Um, genetics also play an important role. Biochemical findings also show us um, exposure to extreme chronic stress during childhood also increases the vulnerability to uh, developing post-traumatic stress disorder. And regarding to our topic for this night, I would like to mention more about the sexual violence. Uh, as we all know, and um, at the beginning of the um, presentation, as Nilfar said, it's very common in US as well. According to CDC, nearly one to five women in the US or are raped or sexually assaulted at some point in their lives, often by some, someone they know and trust. And it's very common in Asia, Africa, and Middle Eastern countries in Turkey as well. Um, regardless of age or gender, the impact of sexual violence goes far beyond any physical injuries. The trauma of being raped or sexually assaulted can be shattering, leaving you feeling scared, ashamed, and alone or plagued by nightmares, flashbacks, and some unpleasant memories. The world doesn't uh, feel like a safe place anymore, and you no longer trust others. Uh, you don't even trust yourself. You may question your judgments, self-worth, even your sanity. And you may blame yourself for what happened or believe that you are like dirty or shameful. Relationships uh, feel dangerous and intimacy became almost impossible. And on top of that, like many rape survival, su survivors, you may struggle with post-traumatic stress disorders, anxiety, depression, and uh, some substance abuse disorder as well. 
And um, so actually it is important to remember that what you are experiencing is normal reaction to trauma. Your feeling of, uh, feelings of helplessness, shame, defectlessness, sound blame are just symptoms, they are not reality. No matter uh, how difficult it may seem you, uh, but you can regain your sense of safety and trust and learn to uh, heal and move on with your life. Uh, it's very important to keep in mind after uh, experiencing these kind of uh, traumatic events. Uh, it, it, it can be very difficult to admit that you are raped or sexually assaulted. There is a stigma attached. It can make you feel weak. And you may also be uh, afraid of how others will react. And you may have several concerns like, will they judge you, look at you differently? And it seems easier to uh, downplay what happened or keep it as a secret. But when you stay silent, you deny yourself help and reinforce your victimhood. And unfortunately, uh, we know that most of the sexual violence victims tend to stay violent, tend to stay silent. And hiding only adds to feeling of shame. As scary as it is open up, it will set you free as well. And however, it's important to be selective about who you tell, especially at first. Uh, it should be someone you will be supportive, empathetic, and calm. If you don't have someone you trust, uh, talk to a therapist or uh, call a rape crisis hotline. Uh, they are available. Uh, in any way, speaking up is really important in traumatic cases. And also uh, trauma leaves you feeling power, powerless, vulnerable. Uh, it's very important to remind yourself that you have strengths and coping skills that you can get through uh, tough times. And for other rape or sexual abuse survivors, uh, support groups can help you uh, feel less isolated and alone. Uh, they also provide some um, information about how to cope with symptoms and uh, work towards reco recovery. Uh, when you feel uh, you cannot over uh, your distress with your own resources and experience these signs, uh, you should apply for professional help. You can seek um, help for trauma if you are having trouble uh, functioning at the home or work suffering from severe fear, anxiety, or depression, uh, unable to form close and satisfying relationships, experience uh, terrifying memories, nightmares, or flashbacks, avoiding more than anything that reminds you uh, the trauma, and emotionally uh, numb, disconnected from others, using alcohol uh, to make you feel better. So, um, you can, you should, uh, you should definitely apply for uh, professional help. Uh, but for sure, working through um, trauma is very scary, painful, like potentially re-traumatizing. When you like speaking trauma about your trauma, you will re-experience re your trauma, like Zumet experienced in the presentation. So uh, this healing work is best undertaken with the help of a help of an uh, experienced trauma specialist. So this is very specialized area. Finding the right therapist maybe takes some time, but it's important uh, to choose uh, like that specialist. Um, and main goals for the treatments are uh, exposing clients uh, to what they fear in order to extend which is that fear, challenging distorted cognitions that contribute to symptoms, uh, and helping clients reduce stress in their life. These are main goals. Um, cognitive behavioral therapy uh, approaches are very helpful. Uh, CBT has demonstrated promising results with acute and post-traumatic stress disorders. Um, I can say they are like scientific, scientifically proven approaches. And if needed, um, biological therapies like serotonin reuptake inhibitors, benzodiazepines are, uh, sh should be considered by psychiatrists, medical doctors. Um, besides all uh, those professional help, when it comes to our loved one, what uh, we can do. Uh, when a loved one uh, has suffered trauma, your support can 
play a crucial role in their recovery. Uh, first, uh, you should be patient and understanding because healing from trauma takes time. Be patient uh, with the pace of recovery and remember that everyone's response to trauma is different. And don't judge your uh, loved one's reaction against uh, your own responses or anyone else. And also you can offer practical support to help your uh, them to get back into normal routine. Uh, they may uh, mean helping with uh, collecting groceries, doing housework or uh, attending some activities or just simply be available or just talk or listen. Uh, but do not pressure, just um, be available if they want to talk. Some trauma survivors find, find it difficult to talk about what happened. So uh, forcing them uh, to talk is not a good idea sometimes. Just uh, listen and if they want to talk, just listen. And um, encourage them to participate in physical exercise, pick out friends, pursue some hobbies and the other activities they, that bring them pleasure. Uh, and make sure uh, you don't uh, take the trauma symptoms personally. They may become angry, irritable, withdrawn, or even emotionally distant. Uh, remember that it is a result of trauma and may have uh, anything to do with uh, you or, or your relationship. Uh, even though I mentioned negative consequences of traumatic experiences, there are several positive aspects too. In the face of negative consequences of trauma, uh, some individuals adjust well to the challenges associated with the trauma as well. In psychology, uh, there's a term which is called post-traumatic growth and which refers to positive psychological change experience as a result of the struggle with uh, challenging, challenging circumstances. And uh, research shows that the majority of the trauma survivors do not develop post-traumatic stress disorder all the time. And large amounts of, um, large number of even growth, post-traumatic growth uh, from their experience. Most of the time they uh, experience a traumatic event can have a transformational role in their uh, personality and facilitate their growth. And uh, I wanted to share this image and maybe some of you know, this is a kind of Japanese art. Uh, kintsugi um, is a art. In Kintsugi art, you basically put broken pottery, uh, pottery pieces back together with either gold or silver. And at the end, you can create even, st even stronger uh, and more beautiful pieces of art. And this is probably the best metaphor that I have ever come across for the process of post-traumatic growth. So um, I can say, if we can read carefully, uh, trauma tells us our cracks can be a source of our personal growth. And so um, I would like to end my presentation with a wish for a world free of war and violence. And thank you for inviting me here. Thank you, Duik. Uh, I think that was quite a useful information and practical information. And um, thank you. If you have questions, we can take a couple questions. I mean, we are uh, over time right now, but I think uh, still can take two or three questions for each presenter. I don't see any question in the chat area, but if you have, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Uh, I may ask um, to uh, Alfidar, how do you help those women, Alfidar? I mean, what, what kind of services you provide in the Uyghur American Association? I was wondering the same thing. <laughs> do they have any like psychological support group or something else? We have each other. <laughs> uh, not much, uh, but we're trying. As I said, we are recently uh, 
starting Uyghur uh, wellness initiatives. And as I mentioned earlier, um, whoever needs uh, psychologists or psychiatrists, we are matching with pro bono uh, uh, psychiatrists and psychologists who wants to help. So far, I think we have 16 uh, doctors uh, who is doing this out of their um, work hours just to help Uyghur community. Uh, but uh, besides that, I think we are feeling, uh, we feel like we're not alone. All my friends are experiencing the same thing. When we get together, we talk about this. We kind of give ourselves hugs. With pandemic now, we are not <laughs> really uh, having that luxury now. But um, so talking to each other, talking to our friends here, and being able to do something for the Uyghurs, like going to the demonstration or calling senators for the bills, it also makes us feel a little calm down and a little help uh, release that stress. So we feel like we're doing something for our people. So I think we're also treating ourselves in that way. But definitely we all need help, <laughs> uh, professional helps. Uh, but uh, little things makes us happy. We try to stay hopeful. We try to tell each other this is going to end. You know, there is a light, you know, on the other side of the tunnel. So that's- it, There's always a hope, right? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Mehmet Yaya. I'm the president for uh, Takam. And I apologize, I missed the beginning of uh, your uh, talk. Uh, but I just want to let you know, Turkish Americans in Michigan are with Uyghur Turks. We are uh, more than happy to collaborate in any initiatives that, that might help those people in captive in, in China. And let us know if there are any opportunities in the future that uh, just know that your brothers and sisters are in Michigan and we are always behind and next to you. Thank you so much. Thank you for that support. Uh, as a matter of uh, fact, yesterday I checked, both Michigan senators haven't uh, co-sponsored the Uyghur forced labor bill. So when we have calls with the senator's office, we would love to have some of you to join and show some support. So the more the merrier, you know, they will listen to us and take it more seriously. And that will be great help, tangible outcome there. <laughs> Certainly, let us know and we'll be happy to support Thank you. Thank you so much. My question. This is John Go ahead, John. What, what are the uh, United Nations level um, um, reaction to the, uh, to the problem? Um, I will answer as much as I know. Um, Unfortunately, not enough. They're condemning, but that's not enough. They need to take serious actions. So uh, US uh, announced it as genocide after that Canada followed and Netherlands did. So, so far three countries uh, recognize it as genocide. So we are hoping other countries will step up, then there will be more pressure. Last year, 39 countries, uh, uh, wrote a letter to United Nations uh, asking for a uh, more deeper investigation and open the borders for United Nations uh, officials to go and check those camps itself. Uh, unfortunately, in the past, there were some journalists allowed, but they were only able to uh, go to the stage camp that looks like school and, you know, girls and boys are singing song. They basically stage everything and show that to the uh, reporters and journalists. Uh, so now what we want is the uh, United Nations is trying to do that as well and waiting for China to respond that uh, open, you know, unconditional access to the camp so they can see by themselves. Um, thank you for the answer. And the, the follow-up question is what are the uh, corporations dealing with the Chinese economy, are they willing to do anything? Huh, that's a great question. Uh, not all of them. Uh, honestly, there are uh, 83 very well-known uh, companies that they use uh, forced labor. Uh, and we are, you know, advocating 
this at the heels, but then we uh, noticed that Apple and Nike and Volkswagen, they're advocating against our forced labor bill. They're saying we cannot tell which ones are forced labor, which ones are not. This is not the right way of doing business. And they're trying to basically uh, water down the bill. Um, and uh, some of them, you know, like Adidas said, they're investigating. But uh, most companies, uh, unfortunately, economical uh, gain is very strong. Uh, they're not stepping up yet. But if we can pass this forced labor, forced Uyghur, um, Uyghur forced labor prevention act in the U.S., then we can work on other countries. If all the countries uh, deny Chinese product that is made by forced labor, if all the countries sanction Chinese officials and then stop their business, it will definitely make a change. Thank you. Thank you, Elfidar. Uh, I don't see any other question. I guess we'll conclude the session. On behalf of TACAM, uh, I would like to thank you again for uh, Elfidar and Duygu uh, sharing your experience, knowledge with us tonight. I uh, hope to see you later in some other events. Thank you. Yeah, uh, we recorded the event and then uh, we started the live screening at YouTube, but it was uh, at the beginning there was a problem, but uh, we will uh, share the whole video at YouTube and Facebook later on. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.